Abby, a young American girl, visits Tokyo, Japan to be with her boyfriend Ethan, only to have him unexpectedly end their relationship and move to Osaka for work. Despite the heartbreak, Abby chooses to remain in Tokyo, holding on to the hope that Ethan might return. One night when Abby feels empty and sad, a ramen shop catches her attention. She then entered the ramen shop that appeared to be closed. The ramen shop was owned by Master Chef Ramen Maezumi and his wife, Reiko. After being informed that the ramen shop was already closed, Abby just stood there and cried. Eventually, Maezumi asked her to sit down and made her a bowl of ramen. Abby, still sobbing, began to share her problems, but Maezumi thought she was a crazy person. After finishing every last bit of her ramen, Abby started to feel better. At work, Abby asked her colleague if she could make ramen. Her friend replied that she couldn't. Making ramen is very difficult and requires training to cook it properly. Abby returned to the ramen shop with a weary expression on her face. Maezumi noticed that his customers was having a rough day, so he decided to make ramen for them. In that moment, Abby witnessed Maezumi's impressive skills in making ramen, which looked absolutely mesmerizing. Abby and the other customers were visibly delighted as they enjoyed their ramen, and they are laughing together. Abby kept coming back to the ramen shop. When she noticed that Reiko, Maezumi's wife, had her foot bandaged, Abby insisted on offering her assistance in serving the customers. Despite Maezumi's wife's initial reluctance, she eventually allowed Abby to help. When the ramen shop finally closed, Maezumi forbade Abby from staying overnight and urged her to go home. However, Abby insisted on staying. After being kicked out, Abby returned to the shop and expressed her desire to be taught how to make ramen, asking Maezumi to become her sensei. Abby started crying again, leaving Maezumi and Reiko, who didn't understand English, confused. Eventually, Maezumi instructed Abby to come the next morning at 5 a.m. The following morning, Abby arrived at the ramen shop, filled with excitement. Without any further ado, Maezumi told her to clean the kitchen. Abby struggled to find the meaning of Maezumi's words in her dictionary. She followed Maezumi inside and got scolded for not taking off her shoes. After finishing cleaning the kitchen equipment, Abby was found by Maezumi to have missed a spot on one of the pots. Abby insisted on going back to clean it. Maezumi then instructed Abby to clean the toilet. However, upon seeing Abby cleaning it with a disgusted expression, Maezumi pulled her out and kicked her out of the shop. Abby still insisted on wanting to come in, but Maezumi ignored her. After a while, Reiko opened the door and was surprised to see Abby still outside. Abby then pushed her way in and immediately started cleaning the toilet. Reiko and her friends discussed Abby's work situation and felt sorry for her. They predicted that she would probably last only three days. Abby appeared extremely tired, yet Maezumi still ordered her to clean the kitchen equipment before going home. Abby returned to work the next day. Maezumi treated her tyrannically and mocked her relentlessly. As Abby reached for something on a shelf, a stack of photos fell, and she caught a glimpse of a young boy posing in Paris, France. When Maezumi was not around, Abby couldn't help but be curious about the aroma of the simmering ramen broth. She decided to give it a stir. However, when Maezumi caught her in the act, she was scolded for touching the ramen broth. Due to Maezumi's harsh treatment, Abby complained that she was here to learn how to cook ramen, not to clean. Maezumi angrily replied that it was not yet time for her to make ramen. After a heated argument, Abby decided to leave. Next morning, as Maezumi began cleaning up, he noticed Abby tidying up the chopsticks. Abby started to open up explaining that she didn't know what to do since being left by her boyfriend. She expressed her determination to become Maezumi's student and was willing to clean anything. Maezumi asked for Abby's phone and purposely stepped on it, then instructed her to start cleaning. While Abby was serving customers, Reiko called her to the back. She handed Abby her first month's salary and told her to take a vacation. Abby was having dinner with her friend and expressed her desire to practice becoming a ramen chef. This surprised the Japanese young man sitting next to her. They started talking and eventually became friendly. As they were about to leave, one of the young men named Toshio gave Abby his business card. While shopping at a traditional market with Abby, Maezumi encountered another master ramen chef. The chef informed Maezumi that his son would soon be blessed by the Grand Master and would become his successor. Maezumi began introducing Abby to the philosophy of ramen flavor and how the broth is the key to harmonizing the taste elements. With the explanation, Abby felt that she understood and started adding spinach and pork to the ramen. Maezumi became angry and frustrated, trying to explain to Abby so she would understand. On another day, Abby met Toshio again and they talked about how they had sacrificed their dreams due to parental expectations. 
Before Toshio said goodbye, he invited Abby to a ramen museum in Yokohama. Christmas arrived, and Abby decorated the ramen shop with Christmas ornaments. Reiko shared a story about Shintaro, who always enjoyed having a Christmas tree. However, Maezumi grumbled about the decorations. Abby then showed Maezumi an ear of corn, highlighting its beautiful colors. Maezumi became angry and threw the corn. Reiko told Maezumi to show more appreciation for others. After the shop closed, Abby went to the back to dispose of the trash. She accidentally caught a glimpse of Maezumi taking something from a shelf. Driven by curiosity, Abby couldn't resist the temptation to take a peek and caught sight of Maezumi crying while looking at the photo she had seen before. One evening, Toshio and Abby visited the ramen museum. They seemed to enjoy sampling various types of ramen. Their relationship appeared to be growing more serious, news about Abby working for Maezumi started to spread and became a topic of conversation and jokes among the people around Maezumi. Udogawa, another master ramen chef, saw Maezumi's decision to teach a foreigner how to make ramen as a disgrace. Udogawa challenged Maezumi to have his student make ramen and be blessed by the Grand Master Chef. Maezumi, confident that his student would be blessed, declared that he would never make ramen again if his student failed. Maezumi continued teaching Abby about the ramen broth. However, Abby still struggled to understand how to perceive ramen with her spirit rather than her mind. In the midst of frustration from being scolded, Abby brought up the incident where she saw Maezumi crying over a photo. Maezumi appeared shocked and berated Abby. He then left, and Abby felt a sense of victory. It was revealed that the person in the photo was Shintaro, Maezumi and Reiko's son, whom they hadn't seen for five years. As Abby started to focus on learning to make ramen, she had to face the reality that the pain she had once experienced would resurface again. Toshio was about to leave for Shanghai to work there and invited Abby to join him. However, Abby chose to continue her training to become a ramen chef. Abby began crafting her own ramen broth and asked Maezumi to taste it. Maezumi, seemingly indifferent, eventually glanced at Abby's ramen broth. After only a brief look and without tasting it, Maezumi discarded the ramen broth because it lacked soul. One night, when the shop was already closed, Abby made the ramen broth again. Maezumi came to taste it, but Abby's broth still fell short. Abby, feeling desperate, asked Maezumi how she could infuse soul into her ramen broth. Maezumi then invited Abby to meet his mother. After trying it, Maezumi's mother commented that the broth tasted bland. Maezumi was also puzzled by this, as Abby had already mastered the technique. Maezumi's mother told Abby that she was cooking the ramen using a mind full of noise. She continued, saying that ramen is a gift from the heart to the customers, whether it's a taste of sadness or happiness. Abby began making the ramen broth again, with tears streaming down her face as she poured her sorrowful heart into the broth. Reiko called her friends to try Abby's ramen broth. As they tasted the noodles, they complimented its deliciousness. Abby then urged them to taste the broth. Soon after trying it, one by one, they began sharing their own sad stories, and it made them all cry. Maezumi arrived and was surprised to see everyone crying. His wife urged him to try Abby's ramen broth immediately. Maezumi tasted it, and gradually, sadness appeared on his face. The day of blessing had finally arrived, and the Grand Master, who was still asleep in his car, was welcomed by Udagawa with great enthusiasm. Udagawa's son brought his ramen dish for the Grand Master to taste. The Grand Master tried the noodles first. When he tasted the pork, the Grand Master choked, causing panic among the onlookers. Then, the Grand Master dipped his finger into the broth and tasted it. He nodded, a sign that the ramen had received his blessing. Udagawa felt joyful because his son would become his successor. Grand Master tasted Abby's ramen which had a unique twist with the addition of bell peppers, tomatoes, and corn. He started by tasting the noodles, then the pork, followed by the tomatoes. Everyone was on edge, anxiously awaiting the Grand Master's response. However, there was no immediate reaction from him. The tension in the room grew as the Grand Master moved on to taste the broth. Still, there was no discernible response from him. Finally, the Grand Master asked Abby the name of her creation, and she replied, It's called Goddess Ramen. At that moment, the Grand Master finally spoke up, commenting that Abby's ramen was delicious. Everyone felt a sense of joy, and Meizumi seemed relieved. However, the Grand Master went on to explain that Abby still needed time and patience. He wasn't able to bless Abby's ramen just yet. Meizumi and everyone else felt disappointed upon hearing this, but Udagawa, ever the opportunist, expressed his readiness to buy Meizumi's ramen shop if he ever decided to sell it. Meizumi sat at his ramen shop, enjoying a drink 
when Abby came to join him. He shared how he had spent 45 years building his ramen business and how important it was for a master chef to have a successor. However, his own son had chosen to study French cuisine and work overseas. Meizumi then reached for Abby's dictionary and looked up the word, successor. He expressed his desire for Abby to become his successor, carrying on his legacy in the world of ramen. Abby felt a surge of happiness and honor at Meizumi's proposition. As the time came for Abby to leave and return to America, she climbed the shrine steps, and Meizumi watched her with a mixture of sadness and pride in his eyes. One year later, as Abby was preparing her ramen, Tashio arrived to meet her. He shared that he had quit his job and decided to pursue his dream of becoming a musician. Abby felt immense joy and welcomed Tashio into her ramen shop, which she had named, The Ramen Girl. 